I think it's a good idea to start going over the design action items, uh, design team action items, um, while we are expecting uh, more to join. Uh, okay, so do you want to do that, Loa, or do you want me as usual to go through the list? No, you handle it. That's fine. Okay, is my voice breaking up? I I think my internet connection is. Is bad or it's good that you're able to hear me. If it gets worse, let me know. I'll change my location. Okay, now we can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, so from last week, we had um, we had started addressing the re or reviewing the co the newest revision of the requirements draft and see how we addressed uh, some comments that were raised. Um, I believe we were we reached. Close to the end, but I can't recall if we closed on uh, review. Um, do we want uh, do we want to add it on the agenda, if uh, or are we done with the uh, requirements draft? And the question is, uh, Stuart and uh, Matthew, if he's uh, joined already, not yet. I think Stuart is trying to find Matthew. So. I, I... I, I don't have a phone number for him. I, I tried him on Skype. Um, he doesn't seem to be around. And he pulled out, didn't he pull out of a meeting today or cancel a meeting today? So he, he may not be available. Okay. Uh, Stuart, uh, we, um, we were going over the requirements draft. Is there anything we want to still um, um, review from that revision? No, we, um, we, I think we did everything from that revision. It's now down to Matthew and I to do an update, and we haven't done any more work on it yet. I can't remember what was the date on Monday. Was it uh, two five? We we spoke um, four days ago, didn't we? The sixth is when we had the the the, the meeting. Six. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it was six, wasn't it? Yeah, probably you're right. Uh, um, seventh. Seventh? It was the seventh. So we had a review meeting on the seventh, and we haven't done any work on it since. Okay, and the action item is to update uh, the uh, uh, revision with the with, uh, review comments, right? Exactly. And if anyone has any other text they wish us to consider, um, having thought about it, then please send it to us. Okay. Is there any action item to review the revised revision or you will be presenting at IETF 113? Is that the plan? Um, I hope we'll be having After, it ready yeah. for 115, 113. Okay. I hope we will have it ready for the next IETF, in which case we will definitely present it. Uh, from my side, I think it's too early to add that. You add that when we need a meeting. So. You can leave that out, I think. Uh, sure. Uh, I was, um, I was going to ask: Are is the um, after this pass, first pass, are we comfortable to uh, you know say that where requirements are clear and we can start working on solutions? Uh, I mean, we we are working on the solutions, but you know, I, I want to see what, what we or get a feeling of. Uh, we'll certainly of the certainly start working on the framework. And yeah. I guess people can start on solutions and we'll see how we get it will converge okay. well okay. talking of starting on solutions um i've put something out there for over a year at this point and we've had a lot of solutions on it i'm not saying that it's the answer but from the point of view of uh, adopting it as a working group document and and then having the working group own it and make the changes that are required to push it to you know, RFC quality. 
would that be a, a, a direction we should follow? The basis for this entire um, design team, I won't say it's entirely from, from that work that uh, I started the FAI thing, but that was a very big part of uh, the, uh, the incentive to start this MEAD uh, design team. And we have been working on it for a while. Um, it has has improved a lot with all the comments that have come in. It is still a long way to go. But at what point do we say, yeah, this is ready for working group adoption, which is a far cry from being ready for last call. Well, I, so I, 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 my question is, you know, can I can I ask for working group adoption at this point, knowing that there'll still be changes? But um, well. That does commit us to a, a direction. I, I have no horse in the race anymore, right? There are, uh, this does commit us to a, a direction, and I think it's only fair um, that others understand that uh, they need to get their designs on the table um, in parallel so we can pick the right one, as opposed well, to. Sorry, do, do, we've been doing this for over a year. So if, I mean, are you are you saying that we just have an open-ended thing and anyone who comes up with a solution, you know, three weeks from today no, also gets but, to run in the race? Uh, well, I think others should others have the opportunity to run in the race. I mean, not an indefinite opportunity, but I think others, by definition, have an opportunity to run in the race. I see. So, how many years do they have? I was thinking of months rather than years. They've already had 12. Um, or I, more. I, I don't think we're uh, precluding anyone from presenting any solution in the design team. Um, I, we've heard most people who, um, today we are going to hear about one new proposal, but I don't think anyone has been left out, uh, Stewart. Do you agree? Um. Well, I think they are as soon they are potentially as soon as you pick up one draft or another as a as a working group um, draft solution. So once you picked a working group draft, then the draft becomes the property of the working group and can change direction if that's the consensus of the working group. Uh, yes, I appreciate that. Yeah, there are other proposals as well. Um, I think there is one being presented today. So we should go through uh, all the proposals uh, before we uh, uh, decide the direction. Yes, I think there needs to be a short period of looking at of, of sort of, as it were, last call on the candidate solutions. Yeah, uh, I, my, my personal view, and I, I read both proposals, um, in principle, there are not much difference between the proposals. Both of them use a uh, special purpose label uh, to signal that they're um, indicators. So uh, both use uh, flags and both are extendable. Uh, both support uh, instec uh, data and post data. So functionally they are similar the difference might be is only in coding how uh, extensions are done and how uh, what's the format for uh, data so you know the one thing that a group might do is uh, after presentation of the second uh, proposal, uh, either today or next week, I don't know what the time would be, but uh, ask uh, offers uh, consider merging uh, their proposals. Just a thought. Yeah, Thanks. we either, that's a good way, um, either that or the other thing to do is to um, do a compare and contrast the two and then pick one on the basis of that work. But I don't, I, I think it's just premature to pick one when there is at least two on the um, on the table until we had a chance to 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 look at both of them properly. Exactly. So what I was I was gonna I was said I was saying that uh, we have one new proposal. It just popped up, uh, 
um, almost a week or more ago. And, uh, and I appreciate Greg's feedback, but we were here about it today. And, uh, but the point, the comment was that we're not leaving any solution. Uh, and not, we're giving them a chance to, to present their work. I don't think we are. Uh... Yeah, I think the I mean, proposal, uh, the extension that uh, came, uh, the base has been around for a more than a year, the Bruno draft. Uh, so the, the idea has been around for a while and there is just extension to it as well. So I think Bruno propo uh, presented a couple of weeks ago. There were some good discussions as well. And this is the continuation of the discussion. So to, to be more accurate, uh, the proposal that was uh, done two weeks ago was a very, very small subset of this current proposal. So essentially, the, the previous proposal just said, we can reuse the entropy label indicator, but carry both the entropy label and the, SL, uh, the slice ID. It didn't go into, oh yeah, and we can carry a lot more things. So the difference between that draft and this one is pretty dramatic. So that's one comment I want to make. The second um, to start explain that this new draft is two weeks old. Um, we've been discussing FAI for over a year. And so to, to sort of put the two drafts on the same, you know, uh, weighing scale and say, hey, let's look at these. It's unfair for two reasons. One is, um, while we've taken our draft and received comments from the group and made updates to it, um, this is just a brand new draft. And the second thing is this brand new draft takes a lot of elements uh, from the, from, I mean, minus the ELI, the, the sort of insistence on reusing the ELI. It takes a lot of elements from the FAI draft. So, you know, in, in other circumstances, in academic uh, journals, this would not be looked upon very happily, but leaving that aside, um, to give sort of equal consideration to a draft that's been on the table for over a year and had a lot of discussion and a draft that, you know, uh, just came out a couple of weeks ago and borrows a lot of elements from this one um, seems, you know, not the best way of proceeding, but, you know, again, that's so, a call for the working group. So, so Kariti, it's not about fairness. It's about the best engineering solution for the MPLS community. Right. I agree. We should definitely look at the new draft. There is no okay. question about that. We don't have to give it equal consideration, but we should definitely consider it. We should be open to new ideas wherever they come from. Exactly. I really like Stuart's suggestion that we consider this to be a last call for the, the, the or we actually create a last call for more new ideas. And typically the last calls have uh, uh, had two week time period. I suggest we have two week boundary. Anybody got anything else they want to put on the table in the next two weeks? Definitely yep. drafts are at the individual uh, work, uh, individual draft stage right now. Nothing has been adopted or even uh, at the last call that we cannot say, oh, it's already adopted and last called or RFC, right? So this is still a quite early stages of discussions as individual draft level. So, Tony, I, I, I understand the two week thing. I think in practice, we're coming up to an IETF. Um, it might be more appropriate to say all ideas need to be on the table by the end of IETF. Well, it's up to the chairs. Yeah, indeed, uh, indeed, indeed, indeed. Okay, I, I, I do want to come back to this action item and I record, on, put something on record um, on the requirements draft. Um, um, do we have a projection of when the requirements uh, will, uh, the ownership of the requirements draft um, will go to the working group? Um, I understand the design team has been, you know, uh, collaborating as a whole on this, as well as, you know, uh, Stuart and Matthew leading uh, the edit, you know, their editors. And so, when are you going to call for adoption on this draft? Uh, I think we'll call for adoption of the next version, and the next version, um, we will be doing our best to get out for ITF. Okay. Uh, it doesn't mean that we will not evolve the document. 
but at least we have the requirements owned by the working group and people will contribute to the requirements draft freely, uh, the working group. People uh, are- I, I'm planning, I'm planning to uh, send my uh, comments uh, next week. Good. Thank you. I, I see the, the, the way forward now. I've been thinking about this a little bit, and I think uh, you and now told the ITF we should have uh, uh, working group documents. I think that we need to lead by uh, the requirements draft and actually make that the working group document first. Yep. And then we need to have uh, a framework document uh, kind of. That's I, I don't know what how to call it a mature individual draft, and then we can start uh, putting the solutions document side by side to see where uh, similarity and differences are, and uh, take a decision on them uh, after the uh, uh, ITF. Yeah, I, I agree. As that's a too early to pick a solution. Um, just a, uh, um, I I have a give a presentations to uh, actually to compare different header uh, encoding styles. Uh, before we fully understand all the trade offs of the design uh, design choices, um, you know, it's just a premature to uh, just um, uh, give a favor to some uh, particular solution. Um, actually, um, several years ago, I already have a I have a draft to list all the possible um, options to support uh, the um, uh, the ADI. So um, yeah, it's uh, different styles using, uh, including using the single label, uh, two label or, or reuse um, uh, entropy label, and also eat from the control plane to do the use um, um, uh, uh, other uh, uh, using uh, control plane means so basically all the possible options are already basically there but uh, there are still details left how how you will uh, encode uh, shall we use um, you know uh, each bit for each header or just a single single uh, label to indicate the existence of the header so so I think we still need a um, more detailed discussions and fully understand of the uh, understand the trade-offs before we make any decision. So I will respectfully uh, disagree. Um, I think the analysis that you did was very helpful, but at the same time, I think we also have to decide whether the hardware will determine what um, what direction this whole work takes, what the new architecture looks like or the architects will determine the hardware. I'm very much in the second camp. I do understand that we can't come up with architecture that no one can implement or would take a decade to, to, to implement. So it is good to understand what the hardware can do, what various hardwares can do, and, and have that, you know, maybe tweak our designs, but if we make that, you know, be the primary criteria for our designs, then we are not doing a good job. We really need to just say, this is what MTLS needs. This is an effective way of doing it. Then look at the hardware and say, yeah, it would work or no, it won't work. We need to tweak it. But we can't look at the hardware and say, based on the hardware, this is the direction my, my design is gonna go. I think that's, uh, that's not a good way of producing an architecture for the next decade. I think either way, we need to explain or relate why we should do this design, why it helps. We have to give the reason for that. If we can't, then why why we 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 take a particular design? That, that's a question we should answer. Right? No, I don't disagree at all. Um, but we don't answer the question of why you know why do we do this when it works like this on such and such hardware. We answer the question of why do we do this? Because what MPLS feature or what MPLS service or what networking service needs this feature? 
And if you answer that question, then I think you have a design that appears to be useful. Then you can ask the question, uh, if I were to implement it on different types of hardware, what would it take? That's that's the direction that I would be looking at, uh, rather than looking at the hardware and then saying, oh, the design should look like this. So, but the, exactly, there are multiple options to achieve the same goal. Why you prefer one over the others? That's a, that's a, that that is the answer, right? Yeah, I, I prefer that because it's it's I, to me the logical way. But I don't think I'm the only one who prefers that. So again, you know, if you if you really want to get down to it, uh, and we want to take every decision to the working group consensus, we can do that. But the, I mean, just the idea that we determine our architecture based on uh, hardware and based on one particular hardware doesn't sit well with me. I I I I, I agree with uh, Kariti. But uh, um, that's the sense of one dimension for make a comparison. Other just a big pure uh, speculation. I I you know that's just not convincing to me. You, we we are still on the requirements action item. Uh, I I don't think we are discussing solutions at, at this time. What I wanted to highlight is we want the requirements in a stable. I mean, not in a stable, at least in comfortable with the requirements, so that solutions can progress, and the design team starts to look at the solutions. So um, that's the point that you know uh, on this action item. I want us to agree on that. You know, requirements are clear. And we start working on solutions. And there are, yeah, I mean, I understand, I appreciate multiple solutions, and and we will talk more about the solution, the new solution that popped up. So can can I? I I've I've noted down uh, for the record a couple of uh, points there, and uh, it, I hopefully you agree with what I wrote down on this uh, item. Are we good with these two bullets? Yes, um, I, I would like to amend a little uh, something that Stuart said um, that because the ITF is coming up, we should lock down um, the, the, the drafts that we'll consider um, before the ITF, which anyway is what happens. So, you know, you get this two weeks before the ITF not at the end of the ITF. I don't know if he meant to say it that way, but um, the, the, the essentially the ITF two week period ahead of the actual meeting where um, all drafts should be in, that could be our sort of deadline for new entrance. I didn't hear feedback from Stewart at least. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I agree with Kiriti because uh, we have, uh, Draft submission deadline, so two weeks before uh, the ITF meeting. Um, let's follow it, not making any exceptions. Third. Fine, I'm not going to fight with it. Thanks. Um, and uh, I'll move on to the next action item. If no, if nobody wants to comment more on this action item. Okay. So we have uh, we have uh, the next action item. We we started to discuss what type of data goes inside the stack MPLS stack and what goes outside of the MPLS stack. We had Kiriti uh, talk about this multiple times, and the latest was that uh, uh, Kiriti will add a, a text in the draft uh, to describe that. Uh, let me ask Kiriti if he has an update on this. Yes, there is uh, some uh, new text in the draft that um, that does uh, address this. Okay. Anything else on this matter? Okay. Yes, if I miss something, is that uh, 
is that graph that come have that text is that posted yes it's the okay. o2 version yeah um i don't know why it's crapping out um i'll move to the action item um next one uh, i have in the list um if there's nothing to add on this uh, the next in the next action item we had to started to talk about it multiple times and uh, we are asking for um, you know hardware experts to pitch in and with their uh, with their views on uh, on the proposal and we got uh, we got some feedback uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago from you and uh, you know let me ask if anybody else is willing to give a update on this or has already updated the wiki that we created on this. Uh, so this is the feedback from, uh, let me not call vendors, but hardware experts. Anyone would like to present their view on this? So we've had some discussions, but not lately with our hardware experts. So if you give me, um, say, two weeks, um, I'll come back with comments from our hardware experts. You know, the the actual direction of those comments will vary, but um, primarily it's about how easy is this to implement as opposed to what is the best answer given today's hardware? Okay, I'll leave it as a comment and we'll discuss, and Noah will look into the possibility. Sure. Of yeah. Uh, I think this is actually on the agenda as the next item. Which one? So, I actually, on the agenda, I asked for the same field that you were talking about. Ah, okay. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, is it, uh, should I move on and let, uh, get back to this yeah. discussion? Okay, that's fine. So, Kiritis, I, I, I did leave the comment and Loa, please look into that maybe in two weeks time. Give Kiriti a chance to, you know, you, 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 you own the agenda for now. Okay. Yeah, make that 224 maybe to be a little more precise. Yeah, okay. 224. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda I have is uh, to get some consensus on the, uh, on the uh, write-up that we had started to work on, design directive. And uh, um, we did not get back to this discussion for a while now. Um, uh, we tried to add it on the agenda, but we didn't get a chance to talk about it. Um, I don't know if we can today uh, uh, so that we can take on the next action items on how to progress on this. I do not have anything to add to this action item. I'm willing to listen on the prop uh, proposals on it. Uh, you wanted to discuss it today, as, far as, I know, as far as I know, there are no new information actually posted anywhere, are they? Uh, no, that we need, we need to this. There was a, uh, um, uh, some comments raised on the write up that we, uh, reviewed last time. And we wanted to follow up on that. The same, the same text. There isn't any new text. Uh, sorry, I'm not so looking. That's right. why it's hard to actually put it on the agenda. But uh... Uh, teams agree in design. Yeah, I think this. Uh... Let Let me look at. My, you might be able to do it next week. Yeah. If If um, I'll go back and check if uh, there's nothing outstanding. I would like to get an acknowledgement that we're happy with the text. Then we can engage the other working group. So. I think this one's uh, 
last item I have on the open action items is, you know, it was, I think, an idea to uh, generalize the actions so that they're user definable. And uh, last update was potential item to be discussed on next week's agenda. Um, I, I don't know if uh, we want uh, well, to talk about it today, but let me ask Kriti and you have, you want to talk about it uh, maybe in the next uh, meeting or so? Sure. Or maybe... Yeah. Okay, I'll leave this comment then. Uh... Put a date on it. Yeah. This was the last item I have. I'll submit the changes and go back to the agenda. So we went over the action items and uh, the next one was a discussion on, you know, what I was saying is the hardware design, hardware experts to give some feedback. Loa, you want to talk more about that? Uh, not really. I'm kind of expecting the input that I've uh, still don't have. Kiriti says that he wants another two weeks, uh, which is fine. Uh, I just want to ask, is there anyone else that can do the same type of job? And in the same time frame. So Kiriti is asking, yeah, and I don't know if anyone uh, wants uh to give their view. Are we comfortable to... Yeah. yeah, hi guys. I haven't, this is my first meeting here and I haven't seen this presentation yet. Uh, I'm trying to find the presentation and maybe get back to you in one week. Hi, Jizu. Yeah, uh, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, can, uh, should I, uh, you know, I can actually put an action uh, item to put you on the agenda? Is that, yeah, are, you committing, are you committing in one or two weeks, you said? Uh, one week is good. Kiriti said in two weeks. Well, I can give my comments within one week. I just need to point it to the slide. Oh, you want to review the slides? I thought you were gonna yeah. give your, uh, okay. Um, it would give you a chance, oh, okay. You want to give offline comments or you want the time on the agenda? Mm, I think offline comment is better, but uh, then if there is more uh, like, uh, uh, questions on those comments, then we can discuss it on the uh, agenda. Are you still with Cisco, Jizo, or you're not yes. present? Okay. I am still, so, I'm with Cisco. Kiriti, yes. Yes, so I understand you correctly. Uh, you're saying that you want to do a feedback on uh, how you slice next week. And the week after, you want to give us feedback from the hardware experts and the doctor. Yeah, I, I missed some of what you said. In two weeks, um, I think I'll have enough time to talk to our hardware experts to come back and uh, have their opinion on the implementability of the stuff we're doing. Um, but in in uh, Next week, there was a different uh, item that I was supposed to deal with. The user defined, maybe. If, uh, yes, yes, thank you. Yeah. So next week, I'll talk about user defined uh, ISD. And, uh, and the week after that, I will get feedback from our hardware guys on impl implementing these new ideas. Does that clarify, Loa? Uh, 
somewhat. I think uh, we need to have a chair meeting to actually set up the agenda of next week. Okay. Okay, we're back on the agenda second item. Uh, anyone? What? So for planning the meeting next week, I want to talk about the agenda with the other chairs. Okay, that's fine. I can actually. And that I'm, I'm probably happy. Uh, Monday again. I, I'm doing something else on Monday. You're busy on Monday? Yeah. Uh, what about Tuesday? Uh, Tuesday should be okay. Well, Tuesday, Tuesday's fine. It's just Monday I'm, I've made arrangements to do something. So, Tarek and Nick, are you Tuesday? Tuesday? Uh, can we make it one hour after? Tuesday is a little bit busier. For me, that uh, at this time slot, any uh, time you like on Tuesday yeah, uh, before eight o'clock at night. Just need one hour uh, further down. Yeah, that'd be fine. So send an invite, please. Okay, okay. Let me let so me give that. Just at midnight. That's fine. Yeah, I'm In sorry. The... I'm just um, I arranged to do something. I didn't hear Nick, but I'm pro I'm hoping that he's okay with that. Uh, I don't think Nick is online. Oh, he's not? Okay. Uh, second show. Tuesday will be uh, 15 o'clock. I didn't understand. That's what we're talking about. All right. Um, should we move on to the next item in the agenda? I think so. All right. So next we have uh, some new document or and some existing documents we want to update on. And uh, without any delay, I'll give you the the ball, Jags or Rakesh to talk about the uh, the draft. Uh, Entropy label extension header. Sure, uh, thanks, Tarek. The, re the reason I put Jax there, Jax there was that he actually requested the, the slot. Uh, yes, actually, uh, people call me Jax, so I'll just use uh, Jax and. Yeah, can you uh, share my screen and. You, you can share the screen, Jax. Okay, yeah, thank you. Could uh, everyone see my screen? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, fine. Yeah, so um, I'm going to represent uh, the uh, our co-authors, uh, Rakesh, Jisu, uh, Bruno, and uh, Yuri. Um, so uh, Jisu is one of our uh, PD expert from Cisco. Um, so the the main aim of this draft is to extend uh, the entropy label to carry the additional uh, MPLS extension headers. I'm sorry. Um... May I ask a question? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Uh, so uh, the original draft and this draft, they position it as extending entropy label. Uh, what I see here, it's a redefinition of entropy label because uh, how the entropy label defined, uh, it's one element. So this makes it, uh, into totally different, and what I find in a draft, it does not discuss backward compatibility. Should, should, should we get? Should we allow him to discuss the draft and then put the questions yeah. in? Okay. Okay. So yeah. So the uh, problem statement is that you know, like um, um, uh, we want to uh, uh, make the MPLS header to carry additional information in the label stack to influence forwarding or do more more uh, action to that packet. So uh, here, actually, like um, uh, we want to uh, we want to carry two two types of information in in the MPLS uh, header itself. So one is the flag based uh, instruction, where actually it doesn't need any additional data. It is just a boolean type of uh, instruction. Another one is the instruction which needs uh, additional data, 
which is going to influence the uh, forwarding um, uh, forwarding packet. So uh, this is in stack, and then the next one is the uh, we want to, uh, we want uh, the MPLS packet to carry an additional uh, data after the bottom of stack uh, MPLS label. So these are the two main things, and apart from that, uh, the um, uh, we want to make sure that. Uh, both of this uh, in stack and uh, bottom of stack data could be carried uh, in, 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 in the same MPLS packet. Uh, so the fourth requirement is that you know, like uh, we want to make sure that uh, uh, the backward compatibility is maintained uh, throughout. So this is the problem statement actually this draft uh, has, uh, um, is going to solve now. So the uh, the high level design is you know like uh, this is the high level design. So um, Currently, we have uh, the extension uh, by Bruno, uh, where actually uh, he has added the uh, spy uh, flag and DTL to uh, add the uh, slice ID. So we want to extend that um, um, his idea to support uh, the uh, support adding the MPLS extension information as part of the label stack, and also the way the way to carry the uh, um, uh, the additional information after the uh, bottom of stack. So, um, so here actually, uh, what, what we're trying to do here is that you know, like uh, we added uh, three flags, uh, additional flags in the uh, ELC field, um, which is going to indicate uh, the, the the flags, which is going to indicate the presence of uh, the in stack data, and presence of the uh, bottom of the stack, and to check uh, to uh, to indicate whether or you no know, the bottom of the stack needs any uh, hop by hop um, um, processing. Um, also on top of it, like um, uh, we have repurposed the uh, EL, ELS TTL field to carry the in stack uh, MPLS uh, header length, so that you know, like uh, we know how, how much of the uh, in stack data we are carrying. Um, uh, so uh, the uh, the uh, apart from this, you know, like uh, we have defined a new uh, the new in stack data extension header uh, to uh, to carry the forwarding instruction and the, and the corresponding data. Uh, so for that, uh, we have you know like uh, use the uh, MPLS label and TTL field to carry the forwarding instruction and the opcode, uh, forwarding instruction opcode and the corresponding data. And uh, apart from that, uh, we define a new uh, bottom of stack uh, MPLS extension header to carry the uh, um, the forwarding instruction, which is uh, after the bottom of stack. So. Uh, so uh, this is the format of uh, in stack uh, mpls uh, um, extension header so here actually we define um, opcode uh, um, okay so so here actually like as i said uh, we're going to have the um, in stack uh, presence indicator uh, bit set in the elc field so uh, that's going to indicate that uh, the presence of the in stack data and the length the the uh, il the in stack uh, data length is going to indicate uh, what is the size of uh, uh, in stack data we are embedding in this uh, with this uh, uh, with this el um so the uh, the uh, el the uh, in stack data format is that you know like uh, we have uh, eight bits opcode uh, at the beginning and then followed by the data um so the uh, the in stack data is uh, is a 20 bit uh, field like uh, which uh, which includes the uh, 12 bits of the uh, label part and the ttl uh, and then eight bits of ttl ttl field uh, so is, uh, apart from that, like we use the uh, which we use the uh, TC field to indicate whether the specific uh, um, the in stack uh, forwarding uh, is uh, hop by hop or it is an uh, end to end. And apart from that, if you want to extend the uh, uh, the data from more than uh, if you want to encode more than twenty by uh, twenty bits of data, then we have you know like uh, the DS bit uh, which indicates the uh, end of uh, the data. So that's that's a way we can extend the um, um, the specific uh, in stack uh, forwarding instruction data. So uh, so these are the um, uh, values you know like uh, reserved uh, uh, the uh, the opcode could be assigned as uh, follow here. So um, as we described at the beginning, right? So one of the objectives is that we want to extend the uh, flags um, uh, what is available in the uh, ELC. So if you want to uh, allocate more than um, uh, the eight eight bit flag, right? So the the value one uh, the opcode is going to extend the flags, and then it's going to carry the flag-based uh, uh, forwarding instruction. And uh, the um, the value opcode two, this is actually like it's an optional. So if you want to see, if you want to know the uh, uh, the offset of uh, the uh, the starting offset of the bottom of stack uh, where the uh, bottom of stack data is located, 
So that could be carried using this one. And uh, the value 3 to uh, 255 uh, will be assigned by INR depending on the application uh, needs. And that, uh, the, uh, the last one is the value 255 could be used for you know, extending this upcode uh, beyond, the, beyond 255 in the future if, if there is a requirement. So this is for the in stack data encoding. And uh, the, the bottom of the stack uh, encoding, as I said before, like uh, uh, the uh, bit in the uh, ELC field is going to say that uh, the BPI uh, bit is going to say that there is a, a data present after the uh, bottom of stack. And uh, the bottom of stack uh, starts with uh, 0010. So this uh, this nibble uh, is, is for you know, like uh, to avoid aliasing with uh, IPv4 or V6 or uh, the, uh, the L2BPN uh, code. Um, and then actually like it um, uh, it has the uh, same concept as uh, the in stack data. That's the bottom of the stack uh, forwarding instruction of code. So this is going to say like which application uh, it's encoding the data. And the uh, the length uh, the the one this is actually the length uh, is going to represent the length, uh, the eight bit, uh, which is going to say the what is the length of the um, bottom of stack data, and the flags is going to say uh, like whether it has additional um, uh, bottom of stack uh, upcode has been encoded uh, in the in the same packet. For example, two applications can uh, encode their data in the same packet. So in that case, you know, like uh, we will have this um, uh, the next header bit set. So that that's going to indicate uh, the uh, additional information. So apart from that, you know, like uh, uh, we could have a, a hop by hop uh, um, operation on the specific uh, data. So so this bit is going to represent that uh, uh, the specific uh, uh, opcode has to be um, um, processed on all the all the nodes. So this is actually the uh, bottom of the stack extension encoding looks like. Yeah. So. Uh, these are the uh, encodings actually we have uh, here. Actually, we we think that you know like uh, the it'll be faster deployment with the incre incremental benefits as uh, egress LER already supports uh, ELI. Uh, assuming ELI uh, EL uses uh, no extra labels added in the MPL stack, also like uh, it's going to save uh, the uh, uh, special purpose label. Uh, so like uh, we can extend the ex existing um, uh, signaling to support uh, an LDP or a CPT, PGP, etc. Um, so, yeah, so that is all my presentation and uh, we have more information about, you know, like uh, in detail, like uh, how uh, the backward compatibility is maintained and things like that in our uh, draft. Um, so, yeah, so that is all the presentation from side. Okay, thank you. Um, so, may I ask my questions now? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so, first, um, I will repeat my question. Um, so if we have uh, a network domain uh, that already supports the entropy label as it defined mm -hmm. currently, so, and it receives the label stack that is encoded uh, with this uh, principles. Mm -hmm. So uh, what happens when it gets to the next label stack element that follows the entropy label. I, I didn't understand. Like, well, you, we so it gets, it gets a, uh, entropy label indicator, uh, takes the next element, uh, and interprets uh, the label space as an entropy label, uh, uses it for uh, forwarding to choose uh, one of their um, um, multiple next hops, and then gets uh, to the next uh, label element, which is encoded according to what's being uh, defined in this proposal. But it's not a label, it's something else. And by accident, it might have this label, so it might uh, match something else. So I think that it will be totally undebuggable because I believe it would be caused because you use already entropy label indicator, not a new special purpose label. Yeah, so uh, so this uh, that's what actually we talked about the signaling, right? So, so where, wherever the- Could you uh, show the next slide, please? 
this Thank one? Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, so, so here, uh, yes. okay, is... go ahead. So this, this is your problem right here. The, the third word you have here, if a legacy implementation sees that, it's going to take that third word and in, in, try to interpret that as a label. Yes, thank you, Tony. Okay, so, so this one. Point. So, uh, okay, so uh, this entropy label is generally uh, um, encoded in the uh, end of the uh, uh, label stack, right? So, no. Uh, no, it can be many times in the stack. Yes, it's, it's not. Exactly. Yeah, it, 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 that's why we have been discussed and there is a, a maximum uh, label stack depth uh, advertised so that uh, there might be multiple entropy labels put in a label stack. Indeed. So, uh, so um, okay, so if you say that you're saying that uh, this, uh, the specific um, um, bits are set. No, no, no. Uh, again, uh, my point is, and thank you, Tony, for uh, helping to bring this uh, figure because it helps. So consider this. So the entropy label indicator, entropy label, mm -hmm. uh, can be anywhere in the label stack. That's right. And so multiple, uh, multiple times. Yeah, multiple, multiple times. times. Exactly. Yes, multiple times uh, it and, could be there. And we have a legacy node that supports entropy label with the uh, special purpose label with indicator. Mm -hmm. So it processes uh, the two uh, label elements and then finds itself placing their third e uh, element as presented in this figure. Yep. And it uh, will look at it as a label. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so th that is possible, I agree with you. So the thing that if you see the draft, right? So the thing is that whenever we we encode this uh, the specific label, right? So we make sure that the uh, uh, the the node which is seeing this one, that's a, that's a uh, node which is which is which is uh, going to uh, see this one at the top of the label, should uh, uh, make sure that that node is you know like capable of uh, uh, supporting this kind of extension if they are going to encode this. Um, uh, 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 this in stack uh, MPLS extension header. So. Uh, that means that, well, firstly, is it in a normative uh, language, it would be a must. So it's not should. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 correct. So that has been described in our draft. Uh, grade. Yes. And then basically, what you're saying is that you cannot interoperate with the legacy uh, nodes. No, like uh, it's, it's not exactly right. So when you say interop, right? So if you say like uh, when the when the header is encoding this one, uh, 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 this case happens only when this this label is entropy label is going to be exposed to that node, right? If it is not exposed to the node, interoperability is going to be good as is. So that's the reason we said that the, the signaling has to be you know like uh, the the header has to be make sure that encode this this say, same thing, uh, say the, the, this this label uh, and make sure that this label has to be popped at the node where it understands this kind of encoding format. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, uh, this was good for, you know, like uh, any, anything, right? No. Even if you have a special label, it's going to be the same I, thing. I probably will disagree because... No, this, if you have a special label, right, then it's going to drop the packet. More yeah, than that. It might happen. Again, yeah. as, as we discussed, uh, because uh, entropy label indicator can be anywhere in the stack, it will get exposed and will get to the uh, top of the stack. Yeah, so. So can I add one more thing to this? Um, the whole point of this entropy label, actually even the FAI, is that yes, you have to be careful when it comes to the top of stack, but if it is in the middle of the stack somewhere, um, it still is processed. The whole point is that everyone has a readable stack depth and so, if this is the third label in in the stack, uh, a, a forwarding engine can go down and say, "I can read five label." Oh, wait, there's an entropy label indicator. I'm going to pull out the entropy label and use that for better load balancing. The problem with, uh, and I think this is to what Greg was raising, if you extend it in this way, there's more data there that's useful. 
if that data is not useful, why put it? If the data is useful, but you know this this node doesn't know about it, all it's going to do is say, oh, I got my entropy uh, entropy value, and I'm good to go, completely ignoring all these other things. So then you could ask, why did you add all that? No, that's fine, right, uh, Katie? Like, uh, if the if you say like uh, in the brownfield, right? So if a middle node doesn't understand this uh, format, so uh, we don't. We want to uh, bypass him. So uh, if, if he sees this one, uh, it is not. He's going to ignore other things, and then he's going to put the uh, entropy, and then uh, he's going to forward it. Hang on, there's a related um, uh, issue uh, to that. Supposing a node sends a perfectly well-formed legacy packet through that node, then. Um, it may pick up the entropy label. Great, I've seen entry, entry labels before. Um, it may pick up the next node, the, the next uh, field. Great, I've seen those before because it's a bit slack what goes on in terms of um, uh, some of the other bits. And now it's going to do something really strange when it sees a, a real label as label three. So I don't think this is really legacy safe. Now, I think but, I think, um, but, but I think uh, the just like entropy label capability, the entropy label extension capability has to be uh, also signal. So if uh, a node that does not support this extension, uh, uh, the, the, that particular third word should not be exposed to it, uh, right? So no, 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 I had uh, it the other way around. Supposing I have a I have a node that knows about this. It gets a legacy packet. Yeah, but regular. Leg uh, is not set, right? right? Stuart? Yeah. We, we talked about this, I think it was last week. You can't send a legacy packet through an up level node or an up level, level packet through a down level node. Yeah. But, but, but actually, this is safe, uh, uh, Stewart, uh, even in the legacy node. So if you say, like, uh, um, a legacy node is sending a packet to a node which is aware of this extension header, right? So we depend we depend on the the no, 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 through field. it through it through it yeah, through it. I'm saying that's fine through it, yeah. right? So I'm uh, I am I am a node which is uh, 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 which is capable of uh, doing the MPLS extension header processing, yeah. right? Yeah. So I'm receiving a legacy uh, packet. Yeah. Right. So I see this uh, this uh, this TTL field, right? So if it is uh, IPI one, then only I want to think that there is some other data and encoded right. underneath. What if you've got one with an IPI one set there? No, I, it I'm cannot be, sure. right? Because mm -hmm. the, according to the draft, like we said, that TTL should be zero. Must be zero for the legacy nodes. Do we know that that's what people have been implementing? I mean, I've met so many sort of oh. misimplementations <laughs> in my time. That is in the RFC, right? The TTL yeah, exactly. Has to be zero. If mm -hmm. they're doing other way, then then we can't guarantee anything, right? Uh, right. So, but but you could. I mean, so I think we need to discuss two orthogonal problems here. The advantage of reusing label seven, and the advantage or disadvantage of it, and the advantage and disadvantage of using your structure uh, as opposed to Carita's structure, but on a new label, so uh, a new label value instead of seven. I think there are two different things we need to discuss. Thanks, um, Stuart, because I was going to bring up the first for sure, and the second is definitely worth discussing as well. So a lot of what's uh, going on in this draft is predicated on if I reuse label seven, um, I can get a head start on implementation. And from all the discussion we've had so far, you will actually not get a head start in implementation, you will actually be fighting a lot of legacy. You know, what happens if this um, is, you know, the, the new format is encountered by an old node, a legacy node, uh, the legacy format is encountered by a new node. And yes, we have some answers to that. But in many cases, I can tell you that we are aware of hardware where we have implemented entropy labels in a fixed factor in a fixed uh, instruction as opposed to a microcoder instruction that we can just re redo so that essentially means that if you want the new uh, instruction to be used we need new hardware we need new stuff to do that 
So all the problems, you know, if you had just said, let's use a new uh, I, uh, it's SPL, so let's just pick uh, SPL 9 because it's free, and then we'll do whatever we're doing here. Um, what you ended up with is at least, I don't have to deal with the problems of someone receiving a legacy entropy label and how do I deal with it. I don't have to worry about, you know, that guy is hard-coded to do something with uh, ELI. Um, I do have to do a lot of new things. The, the, the big thing that uh, I think that's going on in your minds is by using seven again, I reduce my problems, I, I reduce the time to deployment. And I actually think the opposite is true. You're making it much harder, and in some cases, possibly impossible to deploy this because there'll be nodes that say, you told me this is how seven works. This I've encoded that way, and please don't go mess with it because I'm not I'm not microcoded. So I think the premise that this would this by reusing seven, you can get to deployment faster, is flawed. No, I don't agree with that, Kiriti. Um, it's the completely opposite of that. Um, uh, the, the packet format is backwards compatible. So TTL will be uh, zero in entropy label. And uh, it is the extension that tells you there is an uh, extension. It's advertised by capability. So, uh, no, as no, a matter I'm sorry, sorry. I think compatible. you're asking a, a detailed question. What I'm saying is by reusing seven, you, if you expect that this will go through the standards process faster, and we can get to deployment faster. The amount of work that we have to do is as much, possibly more, because we have to take care of runfield. Whereas if you just said, let's just use a new label for this, um, uh, the deployment time. So I'm not talking about whether you can deal with it or not. I'm saying the time to deployment, the time to implement these new features, the time to make sure that legacy still works you know, appropriately, um, all of those, that, that work would be equal to or greater than if you had just taken a new table as opposed to re reusing yeah. ELI. Yeah, I think that's a subjective opinion. Uh, I don't think the intention here is that let's use seven so that we can standardize faster. Uh, um, I think that's on one not... of your slides. I think so like as well. This is, more, this is more to uh, for the adoption in the um, uh, customer network, right? Which is already supporting the label uh, seven uh, in the brownfield network, and uh, that's why so they're supporting, they're supporting a, right? Hang on, they're supporting a particular currently defined semantic for label seven, and we definitely need opinion from people with operational experience as to as to what they think is going to happen when this is in the wild and uh, particularly when there's existing label seven deployment and um yeah um uh, so, so i don't think you can just sort of say uh, say what you're saying without further input and and you have to be careful i did not say the standardization will be quicker i said very specifically deployment will be quicker or slower because to get there, you have to, you know, write this down. It has to be adopted by the working group. It has to become an RFC. But that's going to be the same whether you use uh, an old uh, SPL or a new SPL. At that point, people have to start writing microcode or, or instructions of some kind to implement this in the hardware. On top of everything else they have to do, they have to make sure that legacy nodes work correctly, legacy um, values of this work correctly. So what I was talking about time to deployment, which means time to standardize, time to write all the microcode, time to put it into networks, which is the part that uh, Stuart was talking about. Add up those three times. Um, I don't think that this will be any faster than using a new uh, special purpose label, and oh, in, so. I'm pretty sure it'll be more. It'll take longer. No, so Kirti, couple... I mean, I, sorry. Uh, actually, actually, I just want to note. I looked at uh, RFC 6790 section 42. I copied it in the chat, 
and it explicitly tells us that TC of entropy label element can be any value. That's right. Uh, so uh, uh, if you see the draft of a draft, right? So we said that the uh, the TC field will be valid only when this P IPI field is set. So that's going to cover that uh, TL uh, thing. Well, it I does as long as there is no instance of anyone building hardware with a value other than z other than zero in there. Yeah. So that so, is the RFC standard, right, uh, Steward? Like we said I that uh, TTL must be zero. If somebody violating the RFC and uh, yeah. implementing it differently, then well, we have, <laughs> yeah. Then it's you still have problem. to deal with it. But that's, yes. I mean, you know, the, the whole thing where you have to be uh, liberal in what you send and conservative in what you receive. Um, if you were writing the microcode for doing this, you might, maybe you end up not doing it, but you might say, let me just double check these things. That's why I say by reusing uh, the same ELI, you have more work to do in the microcode. You have more work to do in testing. By using a brand new one, you cut out th those things. And that's why all the other work you do is the same. I mean, oh, I'm with, I'm with I mean, Kariti on that. It, it's certainly safer to use a new value. Yeah, yeah. so Kariti. Plus, so, plus one on, from me. Yeah, so I think it's more of a deploying it in an existing network where the entropy label seven is already deployed. No, and I don't even see why it makes any, I no. don't see why it makes any difference. I mean, the that's, existing that's, stuff. Yeah, come on, come on, John. That's exactly right. I mean, whether it's a new label or in the entropy label, if it's not a top of stack, it's going to go through. If you've already installed a hardware implementation that is not microcoded and you want to support this, you're talking about replacing the hardware with the chip spin, and that's going to be the long pull. Yeah, but you only imp in implement the incremental functionality for the nodes that supports the new extension. So uh, not service providers, like they cannot upgrade all the nodes at the same time. So the entropy label seven with all the hashing function that's supported by 6790 would continue to work as is. And as you migrate the node by node, you now uh, are, you know, enabling the new functionality. So this is the main uh, motivation for this. Yes, so it doesn't, it doesn't, have to it doesn't do anything for you. No, I don't think it does either, actually. But I do. I'd be interested. From there are, oh. there are one or two people on this call who do who know a lot about operating networks. I'd be interested in their views. Some of us used to operate networks. Yep. Yeah, but, but there are others, aren't there? So <coughs> maybe I can jump in. The fact of the matter uh, is that if you want to use this, there have got to be some nodes in the network that implement the extension. Indeed. And if the, those nodes happen to be not microcoded, then you need a chip spin. That's also true. But I was more worried about whether anyone's, anyone with operational experience has got a view on this getting confused about the new and the old semantics of label seven and debugging anything they see. Well, it's pretty clearly impossible to debug. Right. But it would be, it would be possible, well, but it would be possible to debug if it were label nine. Correct. There's a minor sort of uh, addition to all this that, you know, once you get away from, from using label seven and, and you talk about using label nine, then you get to, oh, you, I, you know, in some situations I want to carry an entropy label, in some situations I don't. And so then you come up with, um, it's not a fixed field, which it is now. So it's, it's kind of funny that whether or not you want to use entropy, if you want some of these other features, the in-stack data and the opcodes, <clears throat> you will have to put an entropy thing in there, which, okay, it's not a big deal. But if you designed it right, um, then you would say, hey, I have this new way of doing things. I'm going to make it multi-purpose by reusing bits that were not used before. 
And once I get there, I'll have a bit that says, yeah, I want entropy. And uh, it could also be off and I, I'm not carrying entropy. So I'm carrying exactly what I need to carry. And so you get something that is more sort of better designed. It has all the features you want. But I so think it during the meantime, sorry, Kirti. Uh, just to add to it, uh, Kirti, is that uh, uh, you are right that uh, when you have a new label that also supports the entropy, you eventually you get to that uh, good um, uh, state. But du in, during that uh, incremental deployment of the new feature, you will also have to carry label seven. So now you are carrying label seven, uh, all of the semantics of it, and label nine, right? So now you are bloating the label stack. And you know, service provider, it takes uh, months, uh, years, uh, and even maybe a uh, long period of time that some nodes may never re you know, have the new uh, label nine support. So I just, you, know, you have both just, of them. Uh, I'm sorry, I just want to point out that in Kiridi proposal, uh, the entropy information can be in, in included. So you don't have to duplicate. You can use the new architecture to carry the entropy label uh, or slice it identifier. Global and, identifier. And and identifier. I to, but I think the issue is that uh, the, the existing nodes will not uh, be uh, supporting that, right? So you still have to use uh, label seven. So you had to carry both for a maybe long period of time in the network, it's, maybe more it's a years, safe. right? You know, I I choose safety. And, but and the MSD, thing is, right? You have you to, uh, can we use, uh, you can to use raise hand, please, so that we allow chance for everyone to ask questions. I don't uh, know how to raise hands. Oh, the WebEx has this uh, facility, um, in uh, there's a happy face where you click on it and. It gives you that. Uh... Got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. Please go ahead. Uh, let me see if someone is raising their hand. Uh, then please uh, go ahead. Uh, I I didn't raise my hand, but I'm going to give a chance for anyone else. Okay. So um, what I want to respond to Rakesh is, we you know he's saying that we'll have label seven. Yeah. So be it. We've already done all the work. We've already done all the deployment. That's already there. We don't have to worry about it. Now we come up with, let's say, label eight, which is the new uh, FAI label or some other, some other label, right? That has a possibility of carrying entropy, but it does all these new things as well. And when you talk about, you know, I have to standardize using this new label, I have to standardize what uh, FAI or whatever, uh, special is and how the bits work. I have to standardize all that. That takes some time. Then I have to implement it. Then I have to deploy it. I'm saying that that time would be no different than if you'd reuse seven and then made all these changes because you're going to go through the same things. But when you get to deployment, you, you have a very clean thing that says this label eight has these properties. People that don't know about it are just going to drop the packet. And you know, ideally, you won't even steer the packet in in those directions. <clears throat> Everyone is using label seven for entropy, so the new guy can also use label seven, but they can use label eight if he he, you know, the, he knows that everyone on his path can process the new thing. So I think it makes it much clearer and cleaner this way. Whereas, uh, and so the fact that they, you 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 still have seven is actually. It's, it's a benefit because it's the old seven, nothing has changed, legacy nodes don't need to change, and you don't need to test a whole bunch of things against them. That's the point of having, um, of, of uh, using a new label versus using label seven. Well, see, you do end up with uh, MSD issue, right? Uh, like you will end up with uh, everything related to label seven. And then you end up with everything related to label eight. So now you'll have to carry both of those special purpose labels and bloat the MSD uh, for a long period of time. Uh, I disagree completely. We have bloat damage up the wazoo with segment routing. Um, we've just made our stacks really big. The entropy label is two labels, and the uh, the special purpose label is you know however long it is. 
Um, if, if you could actually combine them in the cases that you do, you don't use the entropy label. But the, the value of this is that you can combine them in places where you say, I want node X to do entropy, but node X has not been upgraded, so I'll use seven. I want node Y to do entropy, I won't use seven, I'll use only eight. It gives you that option. The, the cost is in the case of seven, I'm going to use um, extra two labels. Uh, the benefit is what Greg was saying, safety. Yeah, okay. I, um, I raised my hand. Uh, can I make Greg, a on, comment? Uh, hey, uh, what you, can you give a chance to Greg first because he came in first. Okay. Thank you. Greg, go ahead. I, I lowered my head, but didn't unmute my phone. Thank you. Um, I feel that we can agree to disagree. Uh, definitely authors of this draft like their idea. And we have some people who have uh, concerns about this proposal. You know, I don't think that that will change in course of uh, this meeting that's it thank you while well, you go next go ahead yeah i, I just uh, provide two observations uh, first is that uh, uh we agree that in some cases we do not need the entropy label uh in the package but if we uh take this proposal which means um the entropy label will always be there and uh, that will in incur some extra uh, processing cost uh, to the system, even we don't want to use it. So we need to consider uh, if this is uh, uh, favorable. The, the, um, the, the second observation is that I think the entropy label is already well defined. So even we don't use the, the take this proposal, uh, we might not need any indicator for that because we have already, I think there are already procedures how to find the entropy label uh, if it's a uh, is present in the package, right? Good point. Uh, Rakesh, do you want to comment on this or I'll give chance for Tony to go next? What, what, one thing is that uh, there is uh, there are some interesting debates about uh, using label 7 versus SPL. Uh, there are other aspects as well uh, that uh, uh, we, we should discuss and comment is the encoding part, right? So the the salient features of the encoding is the land and the opcode and 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 whatnot. So this is something also I appreciate feedback from the group. Excellent. Thanks, Tony. You go ahead. So so how you has this exactly correct? Um, we, we end up if we go down this path, we end up carrying the entropy label whether or not we need it. Uh, this is not exactly efficient. Um, the other point, uh, you know, the Having an opcode is actually not the right way of encoding this. Um, I, I love having opcodes in control plane, but at the data plane, we have many functions and we may need to use them in parallel. And frankly, bits are a better way of encoding it. Uh, I did raise my hand and you know, I, I know I'm next, so let me, I wanna shift from the discussion of the value of, of the SPL. Uh, and uh, the encoding, and uh, I, I, I couldn't help that, that to notice that there is alignment in the work that the design team has been talking about in stack data, post stack data, uh, the need for actions that carry uh, data in the stack or outside the stack. From that angle, I see there is some alignment. Uh, the discussions that we're having are very important, choosing the right special purpose label and the proper encoding. Uh, but it's good that we are seeing some alignment in this proposal. I'll lower my hand now. My, uh, next, uh, can, can I go? I, was, uh, I, I think I had my hand. I think Kriti, go ahead. Yeah, um, yeah, I had my hand up for a while. Um, <laughs> so, so, and this is a little bit orthogonal, but I think it's a good uh, long-term view of, of what's going on here. So the way, when we defined the entropy label, we wanted to do one thing. Um, 
So we we wanted to put this field in the packet so that people can uh, do load balancing better without trying to find the IP header and making mistakes and, and doing a whole lot of work in the process. So that was the goal. And I think it achieved its goal reasonably well. The problem is, um, you know, that's one more label that we burned again with a single purpose. We now have two things. We say we're running short of labels um, because not not quite yet. We're about halfway there, but there are many requests for new uh, special purpose labels. At the same time, we also have now a new mechanism where a single label can do multiple things. And if we had done this way back when, you know, things we would not have been in this place. But we are where we are. So by by saying I'm going to have multi-purpose special purpose labels, um, we have now made the problem of uh, special purpose label scarcity much, much easier to handle. So here's my thinking about entropy label. We define the entropy label, it is single purpose, it's working, it's in the network, let it be. We define a new label. And however you encode it, you say, among other things, it can also do entropy. And so you figure out how to do it, you put it in the network, you only use it with the new nodes, and then eventually at some point you get rid of all the old nodes, and not just in this one network, but across the, the MPLS uh, backbones all over. At which point you can say, maybe it's time to deprecate uh, label seven, because I have a new way of doing it. So what you're doing, if you if you take this path, it's a long path, maybe it takes a decade, maybe it takes two decades for e the ELI to be uh, reaped. But, but what you're saying is, I'm going to design a new label the way I want it to and add entropy to it in the right way, as opposed to try to retrofit to the entropy label as it is, and then worry about backward compatibility and forward compatibility. And, and, and as people have pointed out, I'm always carrying entropy with me, whether I want to or not. So you design this right. You say I'm, one of the options is entropy. You put this into the network, and at some point you can say, okay, now I can throw the switch and reclaim seven. People, please stop using seven. I think that's a much cleaner way, not just in the short term, not just with our blinders on, but if you look, you know, what will MPLS be like in 10 years? That gives you a path that's a, you know, a lot cleaner. Now you've got seven back and you say, you can make this a multi-purpose, uh, special purpose label as well. And so it's no longer a single purpose label. It can do many things. And it might have nothing to do with entropy at that point. So that's, I, I just wanted to give you that perspective because th those are the kinds of things that are, were in our heads, but not in the draft, but it might be useful um, for you guys to hear. I'm done. Cash is next. Yeah, so there are two uh, different points. Uh, so first one was about the opcode. Um, so uh, we do have a couple of um, uh, hardware um, um, uh, expert that uh, we, we discuss and uh, of course, it is implementable, it's useful, and it has advantages. Uh, having said that, uh, there is a one value of code one that carries the flags. So it also, the, the encoding also supports the flag-based schemes as well. So it does uh, 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 does best of both worlds. So from that point of view, there is good flexibility. So that's one point. And the second point was that, um, yeah, I mean, Kirti has a lot of uh, good experience and uh, uh, a lot of um, uh, uh, ideas and reason, and uh, I, I, mean, I respect that. Uh, but having said that, I think we're going back to the same discussion that we had a few minutes ago about, uh, you know, deploying uh, label seven in existing network where you can incrementally enable the functionality. So there is a lot of advantages with that approach too. And I mean, it's good uh, we have different opinions and ideas in uh, how we see things, but uh, I mean, there are pros and cons of both approaches. Thanks. Jizu? Yeah, I have a few questions here. Uh, first is that uh, I disagree that we can either deprecate seven so that it can be reclaimed and used for something else. 
because if you ever reclaim and there will always be a, like a one thought that, okay, maybe there is some switch, some legacy switch somewhere that is using seven as an ELI. And I don't think we'll ever have the heart or the courage to cut over to using seven for something else. Uh, secondly, I, uh, and also the other problem that I will see is that now, if you want to use another level, let's say eight also to send entropy, then our hardware or any hardware will now be forced to send both seven as well as eight to work with um, switches downstream that supports entropy level as seven or versus eight. And another thing I want from uh, Kenji is I need an example of a legacy uh, hardware that is using uh, level uh, seven as the entropy level, entropy level only um, as it is, as it was defined on the RFC. And how exactly in what condition, either as a LSR or as an LER, it is going to have uh, trouble when it gets uh, a packet with uh, instack uh, uh, of, um, uh, of code. So that we can, I know we are kind of running out of time, but if we can get that information, we can probably discuss it offline and see if we can, uh, uh, if that is really going to be a problem or not. Thanks. Uh, thank you. I think Tony ha was next. Uh, when we do, we are running out of time, so um, I I I will let Tony ask or uh, comment in, and then I'm I'm gonna ask Loa if you're comfortable over running the meeting. But I do have to say I uh, I have to jump to another meeting. So um, so sorry, Tarek. I can also go directly now. Uh, it's way after midnight here, so I don't want to run the meeting. Too far, too far. Uh, so take Tony and take uh, an answer to that, and then uh, we close the meeting. Great, thank you, uh, Tony. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Uh, so there is no question that the opcode is implementable. That's not the point. The question is about encoding efficiency. We are in the data plane here. We are trying to bit hack. Every bit is valuable and it costs bandwidth big time. Um, you know, it's carried on every single packet. So we want to make use of every single bit possible. If we're going to use opcode one to carry flags and then opcode two for carrying more data, um, you know, we end up with lots and lots of bits that are just carrying opcodes. That's not very efficient. Okay, thank you. Um, I do want to stop right here. I, I'm uh, being pinged to join the other meeting. Uh, this was a very uh, fruitful discussion and thanks uh, uh, to, uh, to the authors for presenting this work. Um, we will meet within the, the chairs and uh, we'll send out an updated agenda. That's my impression from um, the lower. Uh, we will be meeting again from the chair's perspective, right? I guess that was, you know, a way. Uh, no, yeah, I, I agree. So that's why I was there. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. All We're for meeting on Tuesday, aren't we? Yeah, we are meeting on Tuesday, indeed. Yeah. An action item on me, right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a, have a so the Tuesday is just you chairs. It's to it's to set the agenda to set an agenda that's or two, right. I think. That's right. Okay. And no, you, to repeat, do you want to repeat the fact that you're looking for someone to do a presentation? Yeah, I have to answer him offline. Okay. Lo, are you still there? I'm here. Um, I will be at uh, MPLS, um, at least so far. I've booked my ticket. Well, I've booked my hotel and I'm about to book my ticket. So you so, will be in Paris. I'll be in Paris, yes. Okay, so can you make the presentation? I can make the presentation. Um, okay. How, how do you want to, um, uh, do you have a presentation? Do you want me to make slides? Um, uh, I prefer you to start doing slides and then I think uh, all the chairs should uh, review them and uh, make sure that we have something that is uh, 
based on where the design team are rather than uh, just a couple of people. Yeah, okay, okay. All right. So, yeah. so I, I tell I tell Sil that you, you, you will do the presentation. Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, if you guys can get a head start on this, um, I'm I'm happier that way. But uh, if you want, I can get started on the slides. Okay. Yeah. I think about. Oh. All right. Well, we can talk about it more on Tuesday, can't we? Um, yeah. I'm not on the Tuesday call. I don't think. No, we can talk in any way. Oh yeah, yeah. You guys can talk. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but yeah. no, I think that the, the shares could actually see if there's an opinion what we actually want to present to Paris. Yeah, can, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so all, right. all I will say is I will be in Paris. Um, uh, if you want me to present, um, I will be happy to present. Um, and yeah, if, if you have slides, even better. If you want me to make slides. I can I can do something if you, I mean if at least you give me some guidelines to these are the points to cover then I can make the slides. We can we can try to come up with some guidelines. All right, I'm off by the way. See you soon. Okay. See you guys. Thank you everyone and see you next week. Bye. Right.